Welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Ian Yarwood and I'm a lawyer here in Perth, Western Australia. Today's video provides a very stern warning against gambling in Thailand. It is also the third video in a series that I have created about the assassination of Virat Asavachin, also known as Mr. Ban, who once owned Ban's Diving Resort, which is one of the very biggest diving schools on earth. Links to the first two videos will appear in the description below, along with a considerable amount of other material. This video also explains why the current owners of Ban's Diving Resort were driven to hire such a dangerous and reckless person as Santi Cockbull as muscle to protect their new business interests. Now please give this uh, video a thumbs up at any time if you find that it is at all interesting or you think that it's a video that other people should see. And I certainly always appreciate uh, such positive feedback from you, my viewers. My first two videos uh, about Mr. Ban's murder provide some information about the assassination, uh, but I will give you a brief recap just now. Back in early February 2002, the Bangkok Post reported that a man wearing a woolen balaclava walked up to Mr. Ban and some of his friends while they were chatting together near Sairi Beach on Koh Tao. The man then fired six shots into Mr. Ban, then slowly walked away. On the 28th of September 2014, the Bangkok Post published a second article about Mr. Ban's murder in which the reporter Dane Halpin wrote the following. Now before I quote from the report, you might recall that this is within two weeks of the murders of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller uh, on Koh Tao. And the report goes, quote, the handling of the Koh Tao murders raises fresh questions of police incompetence since history is littered with botched investigations. It's not the first murder on the tiny resort island that has left police baffled. In 2002, Tambon Koh Tao Admin Administrative Association Chairman Virat Azavachin was shot dead in broad daylight while talking with three friends near Sairi Beach. A lone gunman, his face covered with a balaclava, walked up to the group and fired six shots at Virat before calmly walking away. No arrests were ever made despite rumours the killings may have been stemmed from a dispute between warring mafia families." End quote. Now after I published my first video about this assassination on the 9th of June 2021, a number of followers, including Terry Graham and Sue Buchanan, and you, you might know that Sue Buchanan had been the original owner and editor of the Samui Times news service. The two of them corrected me and corrected the Bangkok Post on several points. They pointed out, for example, that a person who was a butcher and pig farmer on the island was charged with and convicted of the murder. It was also said that the killing arose out of a gambling debt. In the circumstances, I published a second video on the 12th of June 2021, which included the new information that had been provided to me. Since June 2021, even further details have been brought to my attention. The sources and the information all seem credible, but I will keep some names to myself for fairly obvious reasons. The story goes that there were three main characters involved in this assassination. Mr. Ban was the first, obviously the butcher who was the assassin, and a third man, a Thai man, who ordered the hit on or the assassination. For simplicity, I will call this third character Al Capone, which of course is not his real name, but the name of a notorious Italian-American mafia king in the USA last century. <clears throat> Now, Al Capone owned a rival uh, di diving school and was part of uh, one of five mafia families that run things on Koh Tao. Al Capone's diving school is also associated with PADI, which is the Professional Association of Diving Instructors. Now, the local Thai police are, of course, subservient to these five mafia families. That should not come as news to many of you. Like many Thai men, Al Capone liked to gamble. 
even though most forms of gambling are strictly illegal in Thailand. The butcher had racked up a significant gambling debt to Al Capone, which he was finding impossible to pay. Mr. Ban also liked to gamble, and one day he had the very good fortune, but the great misfortune, to win a fortune from Al Capone. Unfortunately for Mr. Ban, Al Capone had no intention of paying and therefore told the butcher that the butcher's debt could be written off if the butcher killed Mr. Ban, which is in fact what happened. I have also been told by more than one source that prior to the shooting, Mr. Ban's speedboat had been sabotaged with the intention of causing delays to any efforts to have a wounded Mr. Ban taken to the hospital on Koh Samui. Back in June 2021, I was told that the butcher is uh, apparently being looked after while he serves his prison sentence. I do not know the butcher's name, but if at any time I do find out his name, I will post his name in the description below. Al Capone has never been charged. Uh, he remained free, but Mr. Ban's life was cut short at the tender age of 42, and the butcher is still languishing in a Thai prison. So lesson number one from this story is, quote, uh, never gamble in Thailand, end quote. It is also worth noting that the Bangkok Post's re reporting on this assassination is actually quite inaccurate, but I certainly do understand uh, the difficulties uh, that one can have, including reporters, in getting to the bottom of any story from this highly secretive and sinister island. They say that violence begets violence, which brings us to Santi Cockpool. Mr. Ban's uh, widow, whose name is uh, Rumluk Asavachin, inherited the diving school, but to protect uh, the business from criminal elements on Koh Tao, she hired Santi Cockpool. Santi is a little older than Rumluk, but they grew up together on the nearby island of Koh Pang An, which is also a, a which is also a very lawless island uh, with mafia elements. It even has a, a beach called Hard Salad, uh, which in the local dialect is known as Pirate Beach, and it has this name for very good reason. The Gulf of Thailand has had a serious problem with piracy for hundreds of years. It is often said that one will find the worst of Thais on the islands in the Gulf and on the peninsula towards Malaysia. And many of you would recall that after the uh, Vietnam War ended, uh, many thousands of Vietnamese uh, boat people were attacked, uh, raped and robbed by Thai pirates in the Gulf of Thailand. In recent decades, a tourism industry has been built on those lawless islands, so it is hardly surprising that many tourists also fall prey to the criminal elements there. It might appear reckless for me to repeat this, but several people have told me that Santi is a hitman and that he has carried out many hits on the mainland of Thailand. I was also told many years ago, oh, I was also told that many years ago, Santi pawned a watch that belonged to a wealthy man who was murdered on Koh Pang An. I doubt that any of my sources actually witnessed uh, Santi carry out any of those hits or murders, but he certainly has that reputation, which might reflect reality, or it might simply be a case that Santi has been bragging about uh, having performed hits that he never actually performed. It is very clear, however, that Santi has committed acts of violence on Koh Tao, including the slashing open of the Scottish tourist neck on the 15th of August 2020 in front of multiple witnesses. In the circumstances, Santi has trashed his own reputation, so, and he's done that so decisively that I really have no reason to uh, worry about uh, any legal action that he might take against me for referring to him as a hitman, at least while I am out of Thailand. Now I'll just show you a, a couple of images here. This is uh, from the thumbnail, of course, and you can see um, uh, Mr. Ban there in the top corner and there's the logo for Bans and also the logo for Paddy. Paddy uh, uh, you know, has got an association with both Bans Diving Resort and the uh, diving school that uh, El Capone owned. 
and this of course is uh, from a thumbnail that I created for a video about Santi Cockpool having slashed open a tourist's neck and I've got uh, on one on the left hand side there there is the uh, an, art an artist's impression of the wound that Santi inflicted on the um, unsuspecting Scottish tourist and on the right hand side is the uh, an artist's impression of the wound after surgery and in the bottom corner there is a small image of Santi and there is a bigger picture of Santi there this comes from a from another uh, from another uh, thumbnail uh, of a video that I had made about Santi's attack and I will have uh, links uh, below to those various uh, to those various videos about Santi's attack upon that tourist Now it was also interesting to see some of the reactions um, out of Kotao after I published my first video um, about Santi's glass attack upon the Scottish tourist. There was um, one reaction, for example, from a Fiona Ming who was employed by Bands Diving Resort as a paddy scuba instructor. And I'll just find uh, some images of her. So you can see there that um, that's Fiona Ming, and she's described as a paddy scuba diving instructor. We'll go back. This is a larger image of her. Sorry for all those other reflections. This also comes from her Facebook page, Fiona Ming. And here are some of the comments that she made. I just hope that you can see those. It's a little bit difficult. But one of her friends, this is um, under one of my posts. She, she says, Fiona Ming, are you there? Her response was, it's fake. And then it's just a fight. Uh, it's just a, um, not that difficult to read, but I'll read it out for you. She said, it's just a fight between them, normal in every bar. And in fact, the uh, attack that um, Santi Cockpool was involved in was completely unprovoked. Um, I've got this from several sources. A, uh, a female tourist was being assaulted by Santi in the very busy Fishbowl Beach Bar, which belongs to Bands Diving Resort. And uh, the Scottish tourist was just walking past it as he walked past he simply asked whether everything was okay and whereupon Santi immediately spun around and he had a, a bottle of beer in his uh, hand he smashed that bottle on the tourist jaw and then proceeded to slash the left side of his neck open so it was not a bar fight at all but one of the very great problems with Kotao is that many crimes many murders are covered up many serious violent cr uh, crimes are covered up and um, this is just one example of that happening, but that's par for the course on Kotao. So, um, if you found this video at all interesting, please give it a thumbs up. I really look forward to any constructive comments below, and of course those comments also trigger the YouTube al algorithm, which means that uh, uh, YouTube starts to suggest the video to more people so that's always really appreciated and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel uh, please do so especially if you want to get information about crimes on Kotal that you will not necessarily find in the mainstream media but in the meantime uh, please stay safe and thank you very much indeed for watching to the very end bye for now